and it looks like it's going to have to be modified straight out of the packet, so what's unusual about that? Welcome back to another episode of Garage K. This episode needs a little bit of a precursor. If you haven't been following along with the every build or revival or whatever you want to call it, then you might not know what's going on. I've got this issue, um, well actually let's go further back. When I uh, first got the car, the O2 sensor was suspect, so I pulled that out and I fitted a PLX uh, wideband O2 sensor. That way I could monitor what the engine was doing. I figured it was a turbo, I was going to turn the boost up anyway. So to be safe, I wanted to know what the air fuel ratio was like. Anyway, after I connected up the PLX um, and did a bunch of other things to the car, which was a bit silly, I suppose, do one thing at a time and then if you have a problem, then you know what you did was or caused the problem. Um, so anyway, what's it doing? I've got a problem and the problem is that when you turn the car on, the the uh, if, if the car is hot then the air fuel ratio will go all the way to lean all the way like to 20 so it's like what is it 10 to 20 is the scale it goes all the way to 20 and then creeps back to 15 where it should be i thought perhaps it was a um a fuel starvation at startup maybe the fuel pump wasn't so good so um yeah that's the problem I'm chasing. I'm trying to fix the air fuel ratio gauge from spiking. Okay, that's where we're at. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to drop the tank. In the next video, I will show you how to fit a uh, aftermarket fuel pump to this thing. Okay, let's go. Now this is a Saad 130L, this is recommended by Monster Sport for all of their upgrades. As you can see we're dropping the fuel tank this is not the easiest thing in the world to do uh, which is why I didn't film it there are only four bolts holding it up so the way you do this is you put a jack under it um, and then undo the bolts and then lower it down with the jack but before you can lower it you have to undo all the hoses this is where it gets interesting this is the hose the filler hose this goes to the filler cap right this one goes to the filler cap this is a breather one of these is feed, one of these is return, because this is a turbo. Um, they connect up to, see that red clip and the grey clip? Those. Um, you have to squeeze the, the clip and then pull the hose. Not the easiest thing to do, which is why I didn't film it. Took me a long time to do it without breaking them, which is what I would normally do. I'd just buy new hoses because um, We've got a breather up there. And we've got this one here. This breather goes to where the fuel cap is, and this breather goes to the uh, fuel uh, can the uh, charcoal canister, which is basically a an air filter for the fuel tank. Um, okay, so once you've got all those undone, you undo the four bolts. I actually did them simultaneously. Uh, then you drop the tank. Why are you dropping the tank? Uh, just crash into this. This is a real pain in the ass. I've, this van's got ABS, not that it's working at the moment, but it does have ABS lines. This ABS line is right in the way. I don't know why they did that. They did that because Suzuki and why didn't they just run it along this wall? Like, why bring it out in the middle like that? Like a bunch of Um. Right, so drop the tank, pull the tank out, change the fuel pump, put it back in again, and then hopefully uh, my uh, AFR issue is gone. Okay, one thing I forgot that you definitely shouldn't is that your fuel pump is still plugged in. So you'll need to uh, disconnect that. So yeah, do that. That's just one plug. Do that, and then you can pull it out. 
can we film this at the same time or probably not uh, I've forgotten it's completely covered in shit I've forgotten how it comes apart I think it's just that one clip but uh, there we go wow look at all the dust horrible Jesus Ugh, you'd think this thing had never been cleaned probably hasn't okay um, yeah, that's that. So we're going to get this out of here, clean it, and then um, put it back in again. Well, get the fuel pump out of there as well. Wish this was accessible from inside the van, but it's not. It isn't. And, I mean, I could, I could probably cut that space out. That's where, that's where it is, right? In the floor. This space here is fairly obviously where the fuel pump sits. So, actually, that's pretty thick. Maybe I couldn't cut that out. Don't know, um, but I mean, if I did do that, it would make changing this so much easier. But as someone said the other day, how often do you even need to do that? Um, maybe twice in the car's lifetime, so not really necessary. Okay, here is the fuel tank removed. This is what I believe a 40 litre tank. What can I tell you about it? It's filthy. There's the fuel pump, it's in there. We've got a uh, which is this one. This is probably feed. No, this will be return, I think. I can't remember. One of them is feed, one of them is return, and this is just a breather so that the tank doesn't, uh, like, obviously when you pull liquid out of a uh, sealed area, the, the sealed area is going to want to contract on itself. Like, for example, if you, if you, if you suck on a Coke bottle, you're going to pull the walls of the Coke bottle in. Same principle here, which is why there's a hole so that there's no no pressure build up on the inside. That's basically what I was trying to say. This is to relieve pressure while you're pumping out the fuel. Right, I need to clean this off because it's filthy. I need to get no water inside the tank. Then I need to undo these bolts. Is that... Okay, cool. Knowing my luck, like, I'm surprised that bolt there isn't under this here so that you couldn't get to it. Obviously, I don't have a fuel leak under here. I mean, this kind of does look like it, but that's probably from where I, um, uh, well, I did something else that I'll explain a little bit later. I cleared the line by pulling it off the other end and then blowing in it. So the hard lines that run from the engine, we can have a look at them, actually. As difficult as it was to do, I removed this and then um, stuck that in my mouth and blew basically and then so anything that was in this line is now gone same goes for this one the breather and that one down in screen keeps turning off that one there is the return um so yeah pop that off blew into that and then uh yeah so we know that one's clear and free flowing it did occur to me that one of these uh, lines was blocked and that's why I'm having an issue with what I believe is fuel pressure at startup. Okay, that is not going to be an issue after I change this pump. We've got a bunch of kids screaming down the end of the street for some reason. Ignore that. Okay, so here's the fuel tank wiped. I didn't repaint it. Um, this is a daily. It just, um, it just needed to be cleaned so that I didn't get... Uh, dirt and everything in there when I open it so I need a 10 mil ratchet to undo those lift it out and then we'll be able to see the pump I'm using this uh, long extension but I am so deal with it it's just a small stone's throw from here to Jumanji and once all the bolts are out this just lifts out this is the first look I haven't uh, haven't pre-lifted this at all it's gonna be a, a way and a, a way to get this out and a way not to do it I'm probably doing it the wrong way. Um, now, how dirty is it? There's a bit of shit on it. But I wouldn't say it's filthy. Is it rooted? 
Um, probably not, actually. Don't know. Um, but we are going to swap it out anyway, because I already bought a new pump. Alright, so let's take that to a bench and get that swapped out. Before we do that though, let's have a look in the tank. Um, that's really clean, so uh, we're not going to do anything with that. Yep, that's, uh, that's really nice. Couldn't really ask for better than that. So, yeah, good, okay. Karen, there's a little bit of shit in there, but it's not too bad. Yeah, there's no rust or anything. It's pretty good. Okay. Right, so we got the fuel tank out. The next step will be to fit the new fuel pump. As I said before, the fuel pump I'll be using is a Saad 130L. This comes recommended to me by Monster Sport. They use it in all of their high-performance cappuccino applications, so it should be more than enough flow for what I need. Anyway, so tune in next time and I will show you how to fit that. It isn't as straightforward as you would think, but it's not as difficult as you might think either. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. If you'd like to see what happens next, press subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do that by getting your name on the Garage K door or pick yourself up some merch from the Teespring shop. Details are in the description as always. I will see you on the next episode. Later.